Testing, testing. Hello? Test, testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. Testing. Rob, you get a handheld. Or you want this? Camera guys, you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm really excited to be here. I'm, uh, I'm from Montreal. Well, I'm actually from California, but I came from Montreal. It's a long flight, kind of jet lagged. So if I'm a little spacey, I apologize. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little story about... Uh, building the bionic eye uh, in two weeks. Um, my name is, I don't know what my name is, go. My name is Costa Grammatis. I live on couches. I travel the world, find very interesting and unique engineering projects and like try to make them happen. Um, I, I, f I heard about Rob in Wired Magazine. Rob is the guy with the eye patch right there. You'll hear about him a little bit later. Um, I, heard, I read about him in Wired Magazine. He was trying to find some engineers to build a prosthetic eye that could shoot video. He's a filmmaker, and he had a vision for a type of, of cinematography where uh, you, for documentaries, where you go around and you shoot people from the actual perspective of his eye. He, uh, he lost his eye when he was a kid. How old were you? Nine years old in a shooting accident. And how do you turn a bad situation to a good situation? I don't know. You build yourself a bionic eye. Um, so I read about it in Wired Magazine. I'm like, all right, I'll try. I sent him an email. And lo and behold, he came out to San Francisco where I was living in a, a warehouse um, and we, we totally got along. And he's like, come on down to Toronto and live on my couch. And I said, sweet. Um, so our mission was to cram a video camera, a wireless transmitter, and a battery all inside Rob's empty eye socket. Sorry if that, that creeps anyone out. I'm very used to it. Um, for close to zero dollars, because we have no funding of any kind, and we had to do it in two weeks. Two weeks is the really important part, because Rob wanted to go, he was invited to this um, journalism, future of journalism conference in Brussels, and if he had an eye to debut at the conference, it would be huge, because uh, Reuters was there, the AP was there, Every big, everyone who's big in the news industry was going to be there, and they'd cover the story, and, and hopefully that would launch his kind of careers, eyeborg eye career, um, if, if we were able to accomplish it. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the different ways we went about solving the problems in a two-week time frame. Uh, mechanically, the eye itself is, is about 30 millimeters across, and 2.75 millimeters tall, um, 12 millimeters thick, 
and inside the, the tallest space is only nine millimeters. So it's a really cramped space to work in. You, they, they, I'm sure you've seen like the little spy cameras that you bought when you were in high school and tried to like spy on people. Uh, those don't work in this situation because they're just too, too thick usually. We only have nine millimeters. So our job was to kind of take one of those cameras and spread it out uh, in, a, in, a, in a, um, a thinner way. Um, so we got a laser scan of Rob's eye that we never actually got to use until way later. But uh, we, we found an ocularist who was able to take an impression of Rob's eye and cut it in two halves and make a mold. And, um, and you take those two halves and you put them together and there's just an empty space inside. It's nothing like breathtaking. You seal it with wax and you have a prosthetic eye that's hollow inside. Um, we wanted to do it with rapid prototyping, but upon doing some research on like, so will this material kill Rob? All the rapid prototypers were like, uh, I wouldn't put it in his head. <laughs> so we, we were kind of like, couldn't do anything about it. They get, I guess they use toxic chemicals in, in, that, in that process. Um, the camera itself was given to us by our lovely sponsors at Omnivision. Rob worked really hard to try and get a camera company on board that makes really tiny cameras. And Omnivision currently, this is the smallest camera that we know of. I don't know what the NSA is doing, but this is a really small camera. 3.2 millimeters square. It's used in endoscope, endoscope work, colonoscopies. You can imagine why they need such a small camera for that kind of places. Um, it has 328 by 250 pixels of resolution and just a regular NTSC output. It's quite simple to interface with. All you need is a clock signal, some power, and a resistor. Um, I would be scared. When I, when I got this camera, when they sent it to me for the first time, I'd read about it, I'd seen pictures of it, but it is so small you can like sneeze it away. And, I would never undress in public again. Like, not that I undress in public in the first place, but in any place that could be kind of public. Um, po powering the camera was, that, that is the hardest challenge that we had to face because a battery has a limited power supply. In that size, it, there's not that much power that can be fed into the, the the cameras and the transmitters. Um, we wanted to use, we thought, a whole bunch of different ideas, like kinetic power. Rob would be like this all the time, <laughs> powering his eye. Uh, hydrogen fuel cell. Uh, the, the University of Illinois just came out with this really tiny hydrogen fuel cell. I was reading about it. But it can only supply like 0.1 volt at very low current. So it was, that was useless. Um, solar panels, like in the front. How cool would that be if you had like little solar panels in the front? And then I was like, well, what if we, and then I started thinking like really hard outside of the box, like what if we nuclear powered his eye? And I thought that, that's a wild idea, that's crazy, that would never happen, but apparently they do this. Back in the 70s, when nuclear was all cool, I guess, uh, they made pacemakers that ran off nuclear batteries. They had like thermal piles and then, a, and then little plutonium nugget inside of it. And they're, they're really small, but not small enough to put in Rob's eye. So, um, induction was another idea. We were like, how could we beam high power radio waves into Rob's head? <laughs> he was a little concerned. I was less concerned. But, um, it was the, the technical challenge of, of using induction. He'd have to wear like eyeglasses or a hat to, to be in the same plane of his eye or like how it sticks something on the side of his head. It was, it was cumbersome and it wasn't going to work in two weeks. So we went with a battery. We found like this company called PowerStream that makes the smallest lithium polymer batteries I've ever seen. Um, five by nine by 10 millimeters. They're, they're, they were specifically designed